Bless the Lord. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Amen. 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 Good evening, Fellowship Church. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody, online. And thank you, Lord. The Father is good. The Father is good. This is eternal life. That you may know the Father and Jesus Christ, whom he sent. Whoever has the Son has the Father. Whoever does not have the Son does not have the Father. Bless the Lord. This is eternal life, to know the Lord. Hmm. And growing as a, as a believer in Christ is to know him better. Amen. And we know without holiness, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So, Father, we ask you right now tonight to increase our desire for you, O oh God. Let us stand in awe of your mercy. Your word says, you know, it's a little stern. It says, how will we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? And even after we come to the Lord, there's, just, there's an expectation that we would get to know him better, amen? That we would pursue him. So let's, let's lift up a song of prayer to the Lord. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want for me. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want for me. So take my heart and form it. Take my mind. Transform it. And take my will, take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Faithfulness, faithfulness, faithfulness. Is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. And faithfulness, faithfulness is what you want for me. Yeah. Oh, take my heart and form it. And take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. Take my heart and form it like only you can do. Take my mind, oh, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord, to yours, to yours, oh Lord. Righteousness, righteousness is what I long for, oh Lord, righteousness is what I need, righteousness, righteousness is what you want for me what you want for me take my heart and form it take my mind transform it take my will take my will God conform it to yours to yours oh Lord take my heart 
hell for me Take my mind Transform me Take my will Take my will Conform me Oh, to yours To yours, oh Lord To yours, to yours, oh Lord To yours, to yours, oh Lord when I be conformed to the image of your Son, to yours, O oh Lord. Enthroned between the cherubim, God of glory, so full of glory. Reigning in the highest place, you come low to dwell with the lowly. Who is like our God, great is God, most high, the sovereign King, Lord of eternity, glory to the highest Lord, from ages past, who was and is and will be. And you and you alone Pour grace down from your throne From your seat of mercy You show goodness to all your works, giving life and every good thing. And when we sinned, you gave your only Son to draw us near and make us holy. Tell me who is like our God, great is God most high, the sovereign King, Lord of eternity, and glory to the highest Lord from ages past, who was and is and will be. For you and you alone Pour grace down from your throne From your seat of mercy From your seat of mercy And great is God most high, the sovereign King, Lord of eternity, glory to the highest Lord, from ages past, who was and is and will be. Yeah, tell me who is like Tell me who is like, tell me who is like our God. Who is like you, O oh God? Who is like you?
the, the Lord says, no one, no one is like me. That's what the Lord says about himself. There is nobody. There is no one, no one else, and there is none other. Amen? Amen. So, Father, we thank you, oh God. And we just proclaim, even tonight, you are high and lifted up. And you reign above all the nations, above the whole earth. And there is none beside you, and there is no one like you, O oh God. To you and you alone be all glory and honor and praise, dominion, power, strength, forever and ever. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, now we're going to... I am... Now, we're going to have a time of prayer, and uh, thank you, Mark. Glory to God. You know, the Word tells us that God has no respect of persons, but I'd sure love to have been there when Dr. Charles Stanley walked in to eternity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for his continuing ministry, that we can continue to read his, his books and listen to his preaching online. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful blessings that will continue into so many people. Thank you for Dr. Stanley. <clears throat> you know, even go, going through uh, <laughs> a mortgage of trials and tribulations lately, God continues to show his blessings, his, his provisions, his care, his involvement. And one of my testimonies for just today, I was over to uh, my sister Martha's down yonder in uh, Port Tobacco. I was picking up Marcus because I just got back from a, uh, a pain estimate. And April was, April, my daughter April was keeping Marcus for a couple hours. So I'm just kind of shuffling from the living room through the kitchen going out to the deck. And Martha was in the kitchen on the telephone talking to her daughter Nikki, Nicole. And they was talking about how Nikki had to pay a little bit extra money to renew her registration on a vehicle. Maybe she was late. I don't know the particulars. And it dawned on me. I says, you know what? I got an email from MVA that I just kind of let it fall down to the bottom of my list that I've got a, a registration to renew. And I better look into that. And I wasn't sure whether it was the trailer or the truck. So I went outside and I looked at the tag and sure enough, the end of the month, May 23. So I went online to MVA, and it showed that, you know, you can pay right here, right now. Wonderful. And we will take seven to ten days to mail you the new sticker. And guess what? The eleventh day, that sticker would be dead. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for reminding me just in time, and I had the money to pay it. I didn't like the bill, and I was thinking, geez, can't I pay for one year instead of two <laughs> This truck might not be around that long. But anyway, it's done. And as I was saying, just got back from a pain estimate. From I got a referral from one of our, uh, a friend of everybody's in here. And I'm not even going to tell you. But he can tell you if he wants to. But he gave me the referral, and I went to the, to the job in the, in the plate. And it was, it's a pain job, and I got it. The woman called me back this evening. She said, we want you to start tomorrow like you said you would. Several thousand. So it would be paying some bills. And. I, I can share the uh, the uh, provisions with um, with my daughter. I'm sorry. Yeah, my daughter April, who helped me. She'll help me keeping Marcus on a daily basis while I'm working. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, we got us a prayer list as usual, and we're thanking God for calling us to prayer, for hearing our prayer, answering our prayer. I was going to read you the first couple of verses of. Psalm 116, but Marcus took my phone <laughs> and I didn't bring in my hand Bible. So, but anyway, David talking about it, he called on, called upon the Lord and the Lord answered him, giving him praise for that. And we thank God that you do call, you call us and we obediently come, obediently come to you in prayer, thankful that you hear us and that you answer continually, ongoing. You'll meet these people's needs be it physical healing, um, emotional, relational, housing, uh, health maintenance, 
maintenance of vehicles. Thank you, Lord, for keeping mine going. My daughter, April's. My granddaughter, Kayla's, who's, praise God, she's coming down the finish line to graduate from college on May the 19th. Thank you, Jesus. Help the Lord <laughs> to stay strong these past couple, these next couple of weeks. And uh, he'll lead her and guide her to where he wants her to go from there. Even find her the job that he wants her to be at, and he'll close the doors he doesn't want her to go into. So we're going to go into our prayer list, <clears throat> starting with Garnett Anderson and her son Brian, <clears throat> Cheryl and Angelo Farrer, the Larkin family, Melissa Seacrest for her health, Debbie Boer, Ken and Lorraine Mahan, Ella Mason and Evan Mason, Terry Apperson, Linda Mandora. I'm looking to see the couple that I'm working for tomorrow. Carolyn and Skip uh, McConkie. I don't know if they're on this list or not. But we want to lift them up in prayer. Skip's in the hospital. He has cancer. Carolyn may have some health issues, but we're just praying a blessing on, on Skip and the family there. <coughs> Ashley and... Uh, yes. You got that job? I did. Woohoo! Thank you, Jesus. Ashley Enstrom and her two sons. Did I say Linda Mendor and Terry Iverson? <clears throat> Kristen Stockman, Aiden Sweeney, Jerry and Linda Muchel, Maria Jones and her son Chuck Jones, Jean Mathail with cancer, Kathy Soul, Dick Clone with cancer. You know, <clears throat> I think maybe all of us have varying degrees of faith, and sometimes we're, we're so strong, God can do anything, and He will do anything. I, I just say, Lord, <clears throat> those who have these different types of cancer, we just pray your healing touch. <clears throat> Lord, we, we offer the faith that we have, and it's, we ask you, Lord, this scripture somewhere says to help our unbelief, but we just pray you, Lord, it's your power and your mercy and your faithfulness to healing these bodies. Myself, Mark Paulus and family, my daughter Sammy has been incarcerated for a couple of weeks on some pending charges, and she's in a fiery furnace, but I have to be hands off and let the Lord be in control of this one. Uh, James Dorsey, Caleb Bailey, who is incarcerated also, and a few others uh, who I correspond with uh, by the name of Michelle and another name, Cindy. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, giving them comfort continually and continued fellowship with genuine loving believers. Dana Brown, Jesse Gilroy, Linda Grady, Brenda Boyd, Carol DeHaven with cancer, Becky Cheney, Dodie Bedell, Bill and Claudette McLaughlin, Jody Schrader Hart, Jean Suit, Earl Goldsmith's daughter, Vinnie Zorn, Roswell Henson with cancer, Finn Kalsik, cancer. And we ain't going to glorify this cancer. Oh, what a terrible disease that is. It can overpower God. No, it can't. He healed me 40 years ago. They told me I'd be dead in five years if everything went right. Ha, ha, ha. You did it for me, Lord. You can keep on. Jane, Jamie or Jane Fuchs with cancer and son Wyatt. Mom and son healing from surgeries. Here we go, Skip McConkie and his wife Carol, or Carolyn, if you please. My second half of our list is Kimberly Harris, Betty Stepp, the Kocheski family, Dory Hardesty, Brenda Greer, the Malberg family, also Pat's mom, Rose Younger, Margaret King, Marissa Crown, Helen Cooper, Kim Belusi, Joseph, comma, Kelly and family, Tom Flaherty, our Donna Harris, Bob Wynn, who's still having leg problems. Any positive process on that? Bill McConigal, the Vincent James family, L and Mary Jane Mills, Pastor Gary Schneider, Michelle Waddell, 
the Santucci family. Billy Ennis with cancer. Brian Roberts and Brooklyn, comma, Tyler. Glenda Verley's father, Greg. Barb Tuttle. Miss Kyle Ligian. Anne Marie. Steve Hall Sr. Elior Sayers with cancer. Jalen Allman with cancer. You are a great and mighty God, and we just laugh at that filthy, hard disease. You are a great and wonderful, merciful God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, let's see, we have condolences for the families. Oh, okay, they're crossed out. <clears throat> We're praying for those in the military uh, by the name of Israel Remo, Tim Harmon, Jacob Houston, Ashley Baldo, Billy Heath, Anthony Baldo, Charlie Burke, Brandon Hardesty, Adam Corey, and in law enforcement is Joseph Houston. I haven't looked on Facebook for any update information on Mike. Hmm. And I can't think of his last name. But I've been praying for him every time I go past a certain intersection. Uh, Terry Barnes and I have been praying for him, and Terry's been continually ministering to him on the phone. And the man's been a former police officer of Prince George County, charged with murder for shooting a prisoner to death. Self, uh, you know, self, uh, how you say it? Preserving his own life in a fight. <clears throat> anyway. So the man's been in, in, in jail for three years waiting for his trial to come up. Now they started the trial and they offered, a, there was supposed to be a deal offered and the deal fell through or something other like that. But in my own opinion, the man's innocent doing his job. And anyway, Mike, I can't think of his last name right away. But Lord, your will be done that you will exonerate that man and uh, uh, cleanse his name from these charges. And we thank you and praise you because you are Lord of all and you promise to be his representative. Thank you, Jesus. And I do believe and then we'll, we'll just step into a word of prayer now as we run through the list. Heavenly Father, we do indeed love you. We praise you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that takes us through the trials. Thank you, Lord, for your, um, your faithfulness and bringing us through. And even if we, you know, we're coming through the hard way and we, our victory is on the other side. I, I love how in the scripture showing in Hebrews 11 that some, you know, they gave you praise and glory and honor and served you. And they didn't see the answer to their prayers this side of glory, but we will see it when we see you face to face. And Lord, you don't have to make no excuses because things didn't go out our way. We thank you, Lord, that you have your way and we surrender our will to yours and we give you honor and praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen, Pastor. having a backup. How are you feeling today, uh, Andy? How are you feeling after all that work yesterday? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't hear you, Andy. Good. We worked hard yesterday out there on that front property, <clears throat> cutting grass and making it look pretty. Getting her ready for Bill tomorrow night, right? You got it all ready for you. Okay. Uh huh? Oh. Yeah, I think I'll. Ed's doing good. He's back there in the back. Yeah, he did. Thank you, brother. I like being up close. And I want to say, uh, Linda Mendora fell this past Sunday, but she's doing okay. I talked to her Sunday afternoon. She was back at home. And uh, well, I'm good. Huh? She's back at home. Thank you, brother. And uh, 
That's for my big brother, huh? All right. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> I want to mention uh, Sunday, we're going to have communion this Sunday. That'll be a blessing. I want to mention tomorrow, Thursday at 8 a.m. Uh, at Bob Evans. We're going to have a good time there. And I believe Friday we're going to have a group of our people at the Golden Corral. Donna, you know what time that is? 930. 930. And, uh, and that's uh, been quite a crowd going in there. Love to have you all come out. We're going to look at uh, Luke th 23, some of my favorite verses. Starting with verse 33. And we're going to go ahead and open with a word of prayer. And uh, <clears throat> let's see. Philip, you want to come up here and, and, and lead us in a word of prayer? The title of the message today is Tetelestai. Okay. <clears throat> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for blessing us with another day. Uh, like the psalmist said, it was good when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, Father God, we know that where two or three gather, there you are in their midst. So we humble ourselves before you today, Father God. Help us to open our hearts and our mind to receive the word that you're about to give to us today, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for that on the cross for our sins. We thank you for all your blessings. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. I want to say thank you all for continuing to pray for my wife, Donna. She's here. She's doing very well, and uh, her arm is healing, and she's had a lot of therapy, but everything's going real well. Praise God. You mentioned Charles Stanley? Yeah, yeah that was a shock that he went home to be with the Lord. Uh, such a rock. I remember Tim Kaufman, a singer that, you remember Tim, he went into uh, Charles Stanley's office years ago and, and was singing at the... Uh, uh, his program on the radio, TV. And he said he went in and there was wood paneling all behind uh, uh, the desk of Charles Stanley. And he said he happened to notice that there was uh, a crack like in it where it was like a secret panel that was open. And Tim couldn't help but look in and he said there were all kinds of Bibles and pads and things laying on the floor in there. And I thought, so that's where he got all of his power at. And his messages, oh my goodness, uh, what a blessing. If you have your Bible, turn to Luke chapter uh, <clears throat> 23. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, one of my neighbors, who got saved uh, from one of our tracks a uh, couple years ago, and he is in the Word. And he said Luke is his favorite book of the Bible. And he was, reads it every, every so often, but he was reading it yesterday. Luke 23, starting with verse 33. <clears throat> Excuse me, let's read. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, and the malefactors, one on the right and one on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiments and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God. Verse 36, and the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And the superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, saying, this is the king of the Jews. 
The first three words from the cross, Father, forgive them. It shows his pity for men. The second words from the cross, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. That shows his power to save. The third cry from the cross, woman, behold thy son, showing his provision for those that he loved. Then there was darkness, uh, and there was darkness and silence for about three hours. Uh, we read on, and for the fourth cry from the cross was, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Luther said, God forsaken of God. Who can understand that? Then someone comes up, when someone comes up to you and says, Jesus is not God, I would encourage you to throw uh, 1 Timothy 3.16 at him. Uh, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, and that means known, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Don't you really like that? I remember saying, Lord, I, I just, it doesn't, I don't understand that you could be Jesus and you could be God and, and he's the three in one. Remember 1 John 1, 9, is that it? 1 John 1, 9. Uh, <clears throat> there's the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit and these three are one. I was, what are they? Five, seven, and eight. Okay, very good. And uh, then we also read in John 1, 1 through 3. Uh, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And we go on to read. Uh, I also, we can't just hang there. We've got to read another verse or two. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Point number one today, I will say this, though, as we've looked at these verses. Jesus is the sinner's friend. Point number one, Jesus identifies with the sinner's darkness. Matthew 26 says, And from the sixth hour there was darkness over the land until the ninth hour, like 12 noon to 3. It was a heaven-sent darkness. It was as though all creation was sympathizing with the Creator. It was during the time of darkness that Jesus was made sin for us. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He that for he hath made him sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. How profound. He became sin. Tell your neighbors he became sin for us. Amen. Here we see a supernatural darkness brought on by sin. Romans 1.21 says, The mind of man is darkened, because when he knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. The deeds of men apart from God are called deeds of darkness. Ephesians 5.11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And I will say this, this is good. Paul did not say they were in the darkness. Paul said that they were darkness. Nothing we could do would get us to heaven. Satan 
is called the prince of darkness. Sin brings eternal darkness. <clears throat> Jesus, the light of the world, dies in darkness to deliver us from darkness. Can I get an amen? amen. Colossians 1.13 says, Thanks unto the Father, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son and gives sight to the blind. Verse 12, backing up one. Giving thanks unto the Father who hath made us meet or right to be partakers of the inheritance of saints in light. Now through him we can see. Now we are lights in this world. I don't know why. When I think of light and dark, I always think of Comer Manor, Maryland. <laughs> and I tell you why. We used to go to the city dump. I've told this before. And uh, the night watchman loved us. It was about four or five t teenagers. And, and he was probably bored because he was there for like 10 hours at night, all night long by himself. And he taught us how to drive those big bulldozers. He did. I'm talking big caterpillar bulldozers. Andy, you remember them probably. Did you ever drive one? Come on down there one night. I'll show you how to do it. But we used to go down there, and we would drive those bulldozers. And we all had 22 rifles. And we would take those bulldozers back on the dump. And there would be walls of fresh garbage. It was at nighttime. And we would back up to those walls of garbage, maybe 20 feet high, and fresh garbage. And the, on the back of those caterpillars, they had these big fog lights. And you just sat there with the motor off and everything, and then you'd flick that light on, and you would see rats everywhere. And we got some good target practice then, because they would be stunned in that light for just a moment, and we'd be picking them off. One night the police came over. I've told you all this before. The police came down because we had gotten too close to the town of Comer Manor. And there was about five or six police cars. And uh, <clears throat> uh, Joe, the night watchman, said, you all stay here with the bulldozers. I'll run down there and see what's going on. So he went down there and talked with them. And we were so scared. We put all of our rifles up against the bulldozer in the front, on the back of it. And Joe said, oh, everything's okay now, boys, come on. So we jumped in the bulldozers and took off, and we ran over every one of our rifles. <laughs> every one of them. I mean, the barrel would be like this. You, you know what I'm saying? But the blessing is you could shoot really great around corners. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Moving on. Point number two, Jesus identifies with the sinner's uncertainty. He said, my God, my God, Why? How many times have we heard the word why in our life? I heard it today. The lost man lives in a world of uncertainty. Why am I here? Uh, why do I feel so empty? What is life all about? On the other hand, the saved man, there's several verses I believe that we ought to know. One of them is Philippians 1.6 being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will continue it until the day of Jesus Christ. Another verse we need to know and we can bank on is Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for the good for those that love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. Not all things are good, but all things work together for the good. I love that. John 10.10 10 has been on my heart a lot lately. Can anybody remember what that is? For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, uh, and with thy mouth confession is made unto salvation. Uh, another verse, John 8.32. Uh, does anybody remember that one? Did I say? Yep, John 10.10. 10. 8.32, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. And we have a purpose in life. We want to find out what that purpose is. 
and do what the Lord tells us. Isaiah 57, 20 and 21 says, but the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose water cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God to the wicked. Three hours of darkness was a symbol of the judgment that he endured when he was made a curse for us. God could not look on him, on his own son, who had become sin. Galatians 3.13 says, For Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed, cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Uh, think about the earthquake, the torn veil, and the resurrection. The earth did quake. That reminds us of what happened on Mount Sinai when God gave the law to Moses. The earthquake at Calvary signified the demands of the law had been met, the curse of the law forever abolished. The torn veil indicates that he conquered sin. The torn veil symbolized the wonderful truth that the way is now open to God. We have direct access. Aren't you glad of that? I think I told you this, I'm sure. I've probably told you all everything, but just pretend this is a rewind. I remember I first got saved and there was a, there was a man uh, in, in our first church that he felt God was calling him to the mission field. And he was going to Italy was his plan. And I'll never forget, I was young in the Lord and, and I heard him pray. And he said, God, you told me to go to Italy. He said, I know that's where you want me. I mean, it was like he was arguing with God. I thought, oh my, you don't want to do that. But the Bible does say, let us come to the throne of grace boldly. And he was definitely bold. Amen. So the earthquake, the torn veil, we now have direct access. No need now for temples, priests, altars, or sacrifices. Jesus became the eternal sacrifice. Praise God. Amen. Jesus finished the work of salvation on the cross. The resurrection proves he defeated death. He abolished the law on the cross. He conquered sin on the cross. He defeated death for us. What a savior. That just reminds me of uh, that young man that was, or that man that was so blinded the other night, the other day at the funeral. Uh, he said, I don't believe any of this BS. Out loud. And I'm thankful Andy took off after him and uh, preached to him. Andy wouldn't have preached to him years ago, but now he's preaching, praise God. And, uh, but what a blessing this life is. We have the joy, we have access. Um, we, God wants to use us. The resurrection proves that he defeated death. I said that. He defeated death for us. Um, can I get a witness? Amen? Amen. No more guilt, no more shame, no more cover-ups, no need to lie. Hebrews 9.12 says, Neither by the blood of goats or calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Hebrews 4.14-16 through 16. Seeing then we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession. Let us hold fast to what we believe. For we have not a high priest that cannot be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Uh, friends, Jesus feels 
what we go through. Jesus identifies with the darkness, the sinner's darkness, point number one. Point number two, Jesus identifies with the sinner's uncertainty. And point number three, Jesus identifies with the sinner's separation from God. If you receive anything today, get this. He said again, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus did not say Father, which he did the whole time he was on earth until he was on the cross. Why? Because he takes the place of a lost soul on that cross. Why hast thou forsaken me, he said to his father. John R. Rice said, to understand this, you would have to be sinless and go to hell in that state. He was forsaken that you and I, Christian, would never be forsaken. Point number four, Jesus identifies with a sinner's condition and transformation. The last cry from the cross, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. Jesus, no doubt in my mind, was the real missing link. Jesus builds a bridge. Jesus, our only hope. Jesus, our mediator. Jesus said, it is finished. He did not say, I am finished. It is finished, and the Greek is one word, to tell us die. Tell your neighbor to tell us die. The price of sin has been paid. The redemption of mankind has been paid forever. That man should have been listening instead of cussing me out. Are you all with me? His forever could be totally changed. First Peter 1 Peter 1.18 for as much as you know, I'm giving you a lot of verses today. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver or gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. After looking at the events of the crucifixion, we should have a greater appreciation for what the Lord has done for us. Thank God for Calvary. He left the glories of heaven and came down here. This is amazing to me. He wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth. That's for sure. Amen. But listen to this. I never thought of this. Born in poverty, born in a borrowed stable, borrowed loaves and fishes from a little lad to feed the crowd. He spoke from a borrowed boat. He said, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man hath no place to lay his head. He had to borrow a coin to illustrate a truth. He borrowed a donkey to ride in on in the Jerusalem. He borrowed a room to celebrate Passover. He died on a borrowed cross. Uh, it belonged to Barabbas. Then, he, th then they put him in a borrowed tomb. He even bore our poverty. What a savior. Can I get an amen? What a God we serve. It is a, such a joy to be saved and know where we're going. We don't have to doubt it anymore. Uh, we can stand strong in what we believe. If, if we doubt our salvation, it's hard to witness to somebody if you're not sure you're going to heaven yourself. So you want to make sure you have a rock-solid salvation. It's eternal life, which is never-ending. You've called on that name and asked Jesus to forgive you and to save you. And it, he'll change your life. He's changed mine. Those out in YouTube land, be sure to uh, dig into the scripture. See what God has done for us. Look at his perfect words. How encouraging. Amen.
I'm going to give you one more verse. John 5. Uh, I've been given this a lot lately, sharing the gospel with people. Uh, 24. Verily, verily, it means strong truth. I like this for an assurance verse. I say unto you, He that heareth my word, Jesus speaking, and believeth on him that sent me, God sent his Son. He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath, or has, everlasting life. And I always like to ask people at that point, when are you going to be condemned for your sin? And the Bible says, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Isn't that a great verse? Isn't that a great assurance verse for salvation? Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for our group here tonight. I thank you, Lord, for those on YouTube. I just praise you, Lord. I do pray for Charles Stanley and his family. I also pray for Madison tonight. She asked us to pray for her. Lord, we pray for her and her family. We pray your blessings on them. Uh, please, Lord Jesus, do something great in their lives. Also pray for Teresa tonight. Lord, going through a lot after the death of her mom, please encourage her tonight. We love you, Lord. We ask these things in your precious holy name. We do pray for this Sunday coming that you would uh, show up and be glorified this Sunday. In your precious name we ask these things. Amen. Does anybody have any thoughts on these verses that we've looked at? Anybody have... Uh, an encouraging word they want to share. To tell us die. It is finished. Bill, you can help me with this. If I'm right, that when the priest would take the, 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 the not bowl, but the vase or whatever, that would have the blood from, uh, and he would carry it into the mercy seat. It did not have a bottom on it. It went down to like a point. They, could no long, they couldn't set it down and, and talk to somebody because it would have fell over. So once they had that blood in that vase, they had to go in and pour it at the mercy seat or sprinkle it at the mercy seat. Am I right? Sprinkle it. Sprinkle it, yeah. Sprinkle it at the mercy seat. Uh, so when he said it is finished, uh, that's to tell us that, that blood, it's finished. When they had the blood in that basin, there's no bottom on it. It goes down into a point. So they would have to take it to the mercy seat. In other words, the priest knew it was finished. He couldn't do it. He had to go there then. Are you all with me? And you know, another thing that I love is back in Exodus, I think of the blood. And he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. It's, it's about the blood. And some religions have taken the blood out of their hymnals, songs about the blood. Can you believe that? Uh, the blood, that's what it's all about. Thank God for his shed blood at Calvary, for you and for me. Where would we be? We would be lost throughout eternity. But praise God, he hung on that cross for you and for me. He died there, and, uh, and he's coming back. All the other religions... There, you can find their founders in graves somewhere. But Jesus' tomb is the only one that's empty. And he is coming back. And do I believe it soon? Oh, my goodness. I've decided I'm going to go to bed at night with my jumpsuit on. Because I want to be ready. Can I get one more amen? Anybody else want to say something about uh, Jesus? Do you love Jesus tonight? Oh, yes. Amen. The man in the back with the short hair. Do you love Jesus tonight? Amen, Amen. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and... Joe, why don't you close us with a word of prayer?
Amen. Thank you, Brother Joe. All right, shake hands with somebody. Make somebody feel at home.